Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, this is it! This is Top Flight Time Machine, I am Andy Hotbody Dawson, pow pow pow! I'm Sam Nifty Delaney, so what? Welcome! To the uh, the Monday morning episode, you'll get this on Sunday evening if you are IFS, and thank you very much for doing that for us. Um, yeah, you are podcasting from um, a, a remote location tonight, it Sam. You is, are- yeah, it fucking is remote as well. It's a place called Wigtown, right? And one thing yeah. since I got here earlier that everyone has said is that Wigtown is a place that's really mm. fucking far away. From everywhere, from oh, nice. everywhere, right? Yeah. So I had to come up this morning. I had an event, like about you know, a, a talk about my book. It's a it's a big book festival every year. It's like their twenty fifth anniversary this year. So somehow mm. they get a lot of people out here. Do you know what I mean? Even though from all over the world. Yeah, they've got like a really you know good lineup of authors and stuff, and there's lots of people here. But talk about so out like of the way. They, they, hear, they hear book festival, but, but less country, would you say? Uh, well, I've only been to the Hay Book Festival once, and I, I didn't mind it that country. I'm, you know, it was all, all right. right. It was all. I wasn't there long enough to do a full cunt assessment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, I feel as though Wig, Wig, Wigtown is a more, much more of a trek, and it, oh it sorts out the wheat from the chaff in the uh, the literary world. Well, I had to get up this morning. It's, uh, I got a, um, I went, set off for Gatwick at six o'clock. Fucking hell. On a Sunday morning. My plane was at eight. Uh, flew, landed, landed at nine. Did you sleep on the plane like you did when we went to Glasgow to Luton a couple of uh, years ago? Of course. Always. I always <laughs> sleep on planes. No, I never <laughs> don't sleep on a plane. I was looking forward yeah. to it, in fact, when I woke up. First thing I thought Free was, sleeping. oh, can't yeah. wait to get on that plane. But I also, um, They'd sent a taxi for me to pick me up to take me to Gatwick Airport, and that was almost an hour's mm. drive, and I slept in that too. So double mm. sleep. Landed in Glasgow, hired a car, drove from Glasgow to Wigtown, two hours. Yeah. Two-hour drive. Luckily, through some pretty epic scenery. Although it was raining... It was through. It was on a road called. I think it's like the Galloway Country Dumfries Park. Dumfries and Galloway. To- tourism road. There's a tourism road, right? It's actually right. called that. And this my is and the, the sat nav. The yeah. sat nav in the hire car took me on that. It must have just thought, yeah, you don't look like you're from round here. I suppose you want <laughs> to see some locks and hills, do you? And, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I do. So. Yeah, so it took me to earn a, earn a gorgeous route. But, I mean, it's so out the way. It's like, mm. I mean, even if you'd got the train to, like, Dumfries, right, it's still a yeah, 40... They'd still have to map, send a car right. to pick you up and take you for 40 minutes, right? Yeah. So if you look at it on a map, you'll be able to see how madly yeah. out the way it is. Oh, wow. See what yeah, I mean? It's on that bit, it's it's on on that bit, bit that Scotland juts out. Of the, yeah, it juts out at the coast, bottom yeah. of Scotland, right? So it's Whoa. basically... It's not near anywhere. But it is a lovely town. Brilliant. But by the time I got here, because I fucked about a bit on the on the on the way, I got so into the scenery that I took a little detour, and I drove up through like a particularly remote part uh, mm. of this of the Galloway Country Park, and drove up to like this sort of like up a mountain, looking out across a lock, and there was one little cafe there. So I saw one of those tiny roadside signs you see in the middle of nowhere, just saying tea, coffee, and food. That's sweet. Mm. So I thought, <laughs> right, I'm going up there. So I drove up. This- also, dragons. Yeah, well, it was spooky because when I got there, small writing just- at the bottom. There was no one around, and there was just this one tiny cafe in the middle of nowhere. And I walked in, and of course the people were friendly, but the only I said I looked for a menu, but there wasn't a menu. What there was was loads of leaflets about a missing person, mm. and I said, they said, how can we help? And I said, have you got a menu? And they went, aye. And at the, that, the, the missing man took all the menus. And I thought, fucking hell. What do you mean, I Fucking give it to me then, right? But I thought, you you know, I thought, rain it in, Delaney. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're, you're fucking, you're here, you're you're here with your dick. Your, your dick's out here, right? You are literally, I mean, I've got my phone out, not a bar of signal, mm. right? Not a bar of signal. 
All you can see is this lock. The rain is fucking thundering down. Like, I haven't seen another human for, like, maybe 20 minutes until I got to this little cafe. And when I ask for a menu, all I get is a missing persons leaflet. And I... (laughs) And it was like, yeah, all right, you've got a menu. Well, I fucking want it, don't I? That was what I wanted to say. But I knew, no, you haven't got a bar of signal. You could be the next missing person here. This yeah, is yeah. like fucking Twin Except Peaks. Wouldn't, they wouldn't advertise. They wouldn't advertise that you're missing. No. Once they put you. What you the... see? A bald cunt from London. No, we haven't seen <laughs> anyone like that round here. Not since 1974. <laughs> so, but they were nice. I mean, I'm not trying to like say that the people there. Did they were... make you pay five pounds eighty for a vegan sausage roll? <laughs> Fuck no. I had. <laughs> do you want to know what I had? I had yeah. a. I had a cheese tomato and onion toasty. All right, a, nice. A cup of strong tea. I usually, I'm very, you know, as you know, I'm particular around tea, and I don't offer it. I don't often order it on the road, right? Because mm, there's just too a, high a risk of shit right. tea, right? But there was something about this place. I thought, do you know what? I'm going to roll the dice here because they're gonna know how to make tea. I think they're yeah. going to know. And I went, they went, you want milk and sugar? And I went, just milk, but just a small amount. I like it strong. And he looked at me like, hey, you'll get it strong, I'll eat. You'll get it strong. <laughs> strong as get it. Up the uh, fucking ass. Careful what you wish for. You're about to get a strong tea enema. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I was I was right though. He did make a good cup of tea. And then I had um I said they said, Are you wanting anything else? And I went, got any crisps? And they look I'm not joking, it was a father daughter <clears throat> double act, and there was one guy who just hung around. He was just the guy who hung around in the cafe. He didn't seem to have professional role. I think that's just what he did. He sort of hung around. Yeah, he just spent his time there. Yeah. And he went, and they all looked at each other because I'd asked for crisps. And after a pause, they went, cheese and onion, already salted. Right? And I went, <laughs> Two flippers to choose from. I went, ready salted. And then they all exchanged a look again. <laughs> and then, then the dad, hey, ready salted, does it? <laughs> I felt like saying, listen, mate, I've just ordered a fucking cheese and onion toasty. I'd have to be a cunt to get cheese and onion crisps to go with it. <laughs> I don't know why you're looking at me like I'm the weird cunt. Right. <laughs> right. And then he goes under the counter. The crisps weren't on display. Right. Yeah. So. Good. That's weird. And then the crisps were, I forgot to take a photo, unfortunately. But the, the crisps on request only. The crisps were Golden Wonder, a brand right. that I thought had long since been discontinued, <laughs> but not up this fucking mountain in Galloway. They're not. Did you check the date on them? I the fucking should have done in retrospect. Well, fucking hell! Oh, I thought these just been discontinued. I lad, they have. We've had those since '74. We've had those since 1974. <laughs> We've had those since Mister Heath was in Downing Street. <laughs> The bastard. <laughs> that weird bastard. Never <laughs> never took a wife. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. But that was. I'm just I- looking at the map now. I'm just looking at the map now, and I've just realised this is pretty much where I, we went on holiday when I was eight in 1980. Really? And we stayed in a cottage on a farm, mm. um, and it had no television. No. We had a week in a cottage on a farm Mom, and there was Mom, no television. The telly? Yeah, there's no uh, television. Son, sit down. Boy, sit down. There's something I have to tell you. What is it, Mum? <laughs> Has Grandad died? No. <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> Has Grandma died? No. That's worse than that. <laughs> Has the dog died? <laughs> no, it's worse than all those things. There's no telly here. <laughs> <laughs> Take me home. And, and it was like a quarter of a mile drive along a country track once you got onto the farm itself, so you couldn't like run away anywhere. You were just trapped. And uh, I spent the week, you know how I spent the week amusing myself instead of well, telly? Mm. Marbles. Oh, lovely. Did you I brought them with you? With me you and I managed spent to get hold of some. Playing with marbles. Mm. Fucking hell. I but yeah, I'm looking play, at places. Uh, I, used, I went to uh, Castle yeah. Douglas, yes, Kukubri. Drove past Castle Douglas. Well, not right past. Yeah. There lots of signs for it. Yeah, yeah. 
Dumfries, yeah, yeah, great times, apart from the no telly thing. Well, that's where yeah, I am, yeah. mate, right now. And then I finally got to Wigtown after that detour. Oh, the other thing on that detour was they said, will you be having it over there? And I went, <laughs> over where? Because <laughs> I'm thinking, <laughs> I have this in the car. Over there. And I thought, what's he looking at? So I looked over my shoulder and outside this little cafe where it was just a standing sort of situation, there was no chairs. Mm. There was a separate building just with tables and chairs in, but that was it, no yeah. staff. And I went, uh, and there was like one family who looked pretty sad. Like what I mean mm. is like they were, they were, they had sadness in their eyes, right? So, yeah. I don't know what was going They're on. They're there on a Sunday morning. What was funny was. This- I did try to cheer. I did try to cheer them up. I did try oh, to you, do some Cockney cheerfulness with them, but it fucking didn't work. Just right? the died on its ass. Yeah, died yeah. On its ass. they said go over there. So I went. All right. So I walked out. They said, "Here's your tea. We'll bring the sandwich when it's ready." And I went, "Oh, that's nice." Cheers. So I walked across. And it was just a room. It was just a room with some tables and chairs, right? right. And there's this one family in there. So walking. So obviously we're in the middle of fucking nowhere, Andy. Right. Yeah. And there's one family, and I walk in. You, it's only a small room. You're not going to fucking pretend that you're not there, that you're, mm-hmm. you know. So I've gone in, I've gone, all right. Yeah. And they've all like, look hey, down. Hey. Yeah, hey, what's all this then? Cheer up, coward. <laughs> Give us a smile. I know it's raining, but bloody hell, it's gorgeous round here, isn't it? I think I just saw an eagle or something. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a, you know. A, Big thing. It, it, I'll tell you what, it looked moody. They didn't want to know at all. So I went and sat mm. on another table and I was waiting for my sandwich and then I got bored and I noticed that they had one of those viewing things, Andy. You know those sort of right. ninoculars, but they're on a they're sort of bolted to the floor on a You've stand. Got to put money in them. Yeah, but they, these were free. Yeah. But it was oh, like brilliant. the Even heavy bad. duty ninoculars, right? So yeah. I thought, fuck it, while I wait for the sandwich, I'm going to have a little have a look. pipe. I'll have a fucking pipe through them, see what I can see. See if I can see any boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is this one of them uh, ones where I put 20 pence in, I get to see some mucky pictures? <laughs> no, it's not. You're supposed to be looking at birds of prey and such. Oh, all right, please yourself. <laughs> so I started like, just looking through it. And I got quite, you know, it was pretty captivating. So I was looking across the lock to this sort of mountain on the other side and the trees. Was there some oh. mist? Yeah, it was It was dramatic. The Clear weather mist. was dramatic. Yeah. So I was thinking, oh, this is lovely. And I sort of got lost in it. And then suddenly I had the door open. And I was sort of, you know, kind of jumped out of this sort of dream that I'd got in my ninocular mm. dream. Look round. The family had disappeared. The family had gone while I was looking. <laughs> so good. But the woman from the cafe had arrived with my toasty in yeah. a paper bag, takeaway. I thought, okay. this is weird, because this is like, I felt like they were giving me the fuck off here, right? Because I was yeah. like, originally I was going to eat this in the motor, right? Mm. Then your old man, right? I knew it was a father and daughter because she'd said, I'm I'm a way to make a sandwich. My dad there will make you tea, right? So I thought, okay, right. they they want to establish that this is not one of these so May to December couple. type relationships. This is... Yeah. Oh, my mic's gone. My mic's gone. Sorry. Oh, mic's down. Sorry, Mike's listeners. Down. This happens when you set up a, um, a, a a pod rig in your hotel room in Wigtown. So I... Uh, curtains are very nice, by the way. Actually, the they're nice, aren't the they? They're yeah. lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I'm... So I thought, he said to me, go and have it over there. He saw, I thought it was being like, no, don't eat it in your car. Go on, go and have it in our little room. And then yeah, she's come yeah. over. She's given me a weird look for looking through the binoculars. I was thinking, well, they're your binoculars. If they're not for looking, they're there for. if you're going to fucking judge me for looking through your binoculars, don't have binoculars here. Yeah. Right? And she went, there's your sandwich. And it was in the bag. <laughs> and I thought, well, this is, are you basically telling me to fuck off now? You've had your fun. Yeah. You've had yeah. you've had your fill of our binoculars, and you upset when that you, fa- you upset that wee family with your, your stupid ch- chat. Your eagle talk <laughs> with your chat, trying to engage them in talk of birds of prey. <laughs> they were trying to enjoy a nice quiet family morning till you wrecked it, and now you're st- now you're hogging the binoculars. 
I'll get an Oculus. There's no other cunt here for miles around. It's not like there's a big queue behind me. <laughs> well, I said, all right. So I, I, I quickly scoffed the sandwich down. By this stage, I was a bit convinced. I parked the car around the back. I thought, fuck that. They'll have slashed my towers. So I'll yeah. get back. They'll have slashed my tires or done something to the engine, and I'm yeah. fucking stuck up here, and it's like James Kahn Sugar in misery. In the tank. Yeah. It's James Kahn in misery. She's, she's bringing the sandwich out. Dad's around the back pissing in your petrol tank. Yeah, and there's yeah. fucking all sorts of like weird sedative in the cheese and onion toasty. I'm going yeah. down. When I wake up, fuck knows, I'll be in a gimp suit. Probably. Um, but anyway, it's Sunday as well. Despite all of that, I did enjoy that little detour. And then I got to Wigtown, went straight into my event. That went well. Then I came to my hotel, dumped my stuff. Then I went back out because uh, Pat Nevin was doing a chat about his new book. Oh, um, brilliant. So. Big fan of Pat Nevin. Yeah, really great. I was I was really lucky, actually. There's a lot of different authors on. And I thought, yeah, you know, I'm here. And I get free, because I was one of the authors, I got access, free, at, they give you a pass, get free access to the other events. So I thought, I'm staying the night. I might as well see something. Yeah, so of I, So I go out. First thing I hear about, Pat Nevin's doing it. Main event of the night. So he had loads of great stories. Uh, one was about Pele, which was always, which is always nice. Oh wow! And uh, he did a Q and A afterwards. Yeah, top bloke, really enjoyed it. Jalapeno. Here's a brief but annoying message to let you know that you wouldn't be hearing this brief but annoying message if you were a subscriber to our Iron Filing Society Patreon offering. For the price of a pint and a St Clements each month, you can get up to four episodes a week, nine months before the rest of the world gets them. Early access to regular episodes. Lots of other marvellous benefits and there's absolutely no adverts or brief but annoying messages like this that will get right on your ticks. Find out more and subscribe now at tftimemachine.com slash iron filings. Jalapeño. Jalapeño. But then every restaurant, and by every, I mean both, in town was fully booked <laughs> and I was fucking stunning. You know, often we we're on tour and I get food panics. I forget to eat. You do. You do. Yeah. And Not I everything one, gets dropped and you need to eat. Yeah. I, I get, I get those. I got into one of those situations and, uh, all the restaurants were booked up and I could feel myself getting angry. So what I've got is I bought myself a Tesco. There was a Tesco and I bought myself mm. a, a hotel room picnic. Oh, nice one. Yeah, just a selection of cold foods that I can have in my room mm-hmm. uh, whilst watching. There's a there was a Sitting. nature program on, and I and I Sitting even cross legged on your bed. Yeah, I even bought because I got a roll, right? Oh, yeah. But the roll needed cutting open and things spreading it, so I bought a paper plate and some cardboard <laughs> cutlery for my little hotel room picnic all on my own. <laughs> Has the hotel not got like, food facilities? Got, no, uh, not not dinner. Not dinner. They're, they're laying on breakfast in the morning. I had one of those little breakfast. forms. Right. I had one of those little forms that you fill out where you fill out what you right. want in your breakfast, which is always okay. tremendous yeah. fun, isn't it? Vegetarian option. She said, yeah, vegetarian veget-. sausage. She said to me, are you a vegetarian, are you? Right, I don't know. I see. We I had thought, one, of you, yeah. one of your people here in 1974. Yeah. We'd never, he's never been heard of again. Once in a while, <laughs> one time a policeman arrived from down south asking questions about his whereabouts. <laughs> that policeman's never been seen again either. So disappeared. <laughs> we burnt him in a huge wicker construction. <laughs> We're not ashamed to see it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so they said, where well, it says sausage on the form, mm. right next to it, veggie. And he'll get he'll he'll cook you a Linda McCartney. <laughs> Very modern. Yeah. So I was like, well, I will then, and that's exactly what I fucking did. Very and nice. I, yeah. Fucking and uh, you know those potato things they do here in Scotland. Uh, I'll read it to you if you want. Here's the form, Andy. No, I know this is Good. useless to listeners, but it's quite. I know that it's I instinctively well know presented. that a breakfast form is the sort of thing you'll be interested in. Definitely. All right. You can post that for the, the uh, Pers- Personalised as well, by the way, with your room's name. I won't tell. This might go out tonight yeah, to IFS. Too much so I'm not going to say what the this... name of my room is in case someone... Yeah, but, um, it won't be gone until it's uh, out. Yeah, and it's uh, sausage, bacon, egg, haggis, potato mm. scone... 
I'll be mm-hmm. fucking having that. Don't worry about that. Yep. Mushrooms, tomato, mm-hmm. brown toast, white toast, pottage. Mm. And then at the end it says, or oh, maybe have the lighter options below. And the lighter Look. options below are scrambled egg with salmon or two times boiled egg. Ooh. Ooh, scrambled egg with salmon. Ooh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, I don't eat fish, but that would have been As well nice. as the sausages. Yeah. So I've checked sausage. <clears throat> I've checked veggie sausage and written veggie in, which she told me to do. Egg, potato scone, tomato, brown toast. I'm disappointed there's no beans. Very mm. disappointed because I, I like that, something. Yeah. I like to have, I don't like it to be too wet. They're too dry. So I've ordered a tomato, which mm. I wouldn't use here. I'm not mad on the breakfast tomato myself. But I've had to because there's no beans. If it's um, an actual tomato, I'm not into it. I'm not feeling it. If it's mm. tinned, tinned yeah. plum tomatoes. Plum tomatoes. Yes, please. All yeah. fucking day long. You don't They're get that. At least, least down here, you don't. It, well, in London, you don't get that as much as you used to. You used to get it like standard in greasy spoons. They'll, yeah. They'll just have a tomato and they'll grill it a little bit. And it's yeah. Like, Fuck off. And what about if it's the half of the tomato with the fucking green bit in it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. A tomato, like a raw tomato, is meant to be taken cold. It's not meant to be grilled, cooked, heated. But up. you know what I'm talking plum, about? That Plum, the, plum the tomatoes root. In, in tomato juice. Yes. Yeah, Heat lovely. that up by all means because the juice. Makes mm. it worthwhile as a hot dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, what I'm talking about, Andy, is when they grill the fresh tomato and they, what they've given mm. you, that bit, there's two halves of the tomato, one smooth mm. on the underside, the other one mm. has the green bit that was attached to the stalk, and that's hard, Yeah. and it's like eating yeah. a bit of a, an inedible plant. And I have yeah. to cut. I, I've got. I really cut can't have that at all. I've got to cut that out. And then you've lost like third of the tomato cutting mm. it out. You know, so the yeah, whole I mean, thing's a this, scam. Did Did you see you've gone for tomato or not? I have, but well, I'll just have to see just what out to, of necessity really. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because there was no beans. That's what I'm saying. So I'll yeah. update you and the listeners on an episode later in the week about what goes on in the morning. But um, yeah, that's where I'm at and tonight. Are you in? Are you in are you in Wigtown itself? Yep. Are you allowed to see her that much? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Wigtown, and I might even have time. My flight's from Glasgow's not till tomorrow afternoon, so I might even have time for uh, a, some other sort of like... There's fucking loads. They call it, when you arrive on the road signs, it says, Welcome to Wigtown, mm-hmm. book capital of Scotland. And there is... You'd love it, mate. There are so many second-hand bookshops here. It's unbelievable. Fucking loads of them. brilliant. Yeah, yeah loads and loads. Up, yeah. It's like a brilliant, it's like the ultimate sort of mooch about town, really. Um, so, because I'm not that far from, from all of that, because I'm just crossing it's the just side. that it's only just up from Carlisle. So, it, yeah, from Newcastle to Carlisle, I did that drive last year when we did the, the gig, and <clears throat> that's yeah. it's like less than two hours. And then once you're in Carlisle, it's just a little, it's a little it's, bit further. It's, it's, Three hours from me. It looks like oh, it's it? almost an hour and a half from Carlisle. Oh, is it? Oh, I thought it was nearer to Carlisle. All the windy roads and everything, but yeah. it'd be worth it though, definitely. Yeah. So I can recommend that. Oh, and one other thing. Yesterday I did a, another book event. It's book event season in Barnes, and someone and there was quite a few IFS at it. So thank you to everyone who came there. Um, I wrote Keep It Cunty in several books. Um, and one person, Andy had a gift mm-hmm. for both you and I. Whoa! And it was the gift of perfume, right? Ooh. Yeah. And it was, I feel awful now, actually, because I I haven't got it on me and I've forgotten the name. So I'll have to tweet about it. But, well, you mean um, you are in a different part of the country, so that's, that's fine. Yeah, I'm in a different part of the country. And the perfume that I was given is back home in in London. But um, Right. This this guy is IFS and he works at a perfumier's in like Ravenscourt Park, which is really near. Like, I was going to say, has he has he, he devised this perfume himself? If that's no, the word. He, yes. He, well, I don't know if he's the the gaffer. He works. He, he referred to another woman who was like the chief perfumier, right? Mm. And she is like the real deal. And they've got a they've got a I don't know what you call it a lab or what, but I, think I lab, um, yeah. She yeah. said I could, he said I could go down and, and have a tour of it, which I am 100% going to do. 
and he had a selection. She, they'd made me a selection of um, perfumes based around the smells of West London, right? Oh. Now, I know what you're going to say, <laughs> right? Was, was that chip fat and piss? No. Yeah. It was the, each of them were named after different little parts of West London, and and because he knew that's where I was from, they made it, and they all came in these lovely, delightfully wrapped little files, right? But then they had one for you. Now, I've got to try and remember because it's not on me, but it was a mince reference, and it was to do with mm-hmm. the cologne that a character in Bob's novel wears, and it's called Electric Something. And right. It's, and it's based on the the, it, the, the scent of um, local seaside resort in the northeast Seaburn. Whoa, yeah, yeah. So I think it's Seaburn, called. You said yeah, electric Seaburn. Yeah, I think that's it's my, called. That's my beach. Seaburn. Yeah, that's your beach. So they they've yeah. made you a perfume to smell of Seaburn, and wow. I've got it for you, and it's personalised the label and everything. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible! Well, if the person's mm. listening, to the, the perfume here. In, in questions listening, yeah. thank you so much for that. Well, um, um, I always, if, I always if, thought when we started this that we'd get a lot of perfumiers I tuning in eventually we get, if we worked at what it. What have we had over the years? What have we had? We've had a load of dog and cat products, and even that's yeah. dried up at this stage. Yeah, We've had dog and cat products. We had some coffee. Mm. Uh, what else have we had? Someone gave well, us a bag got of potatoes people once. people who were, who, who were our official... Like we've got a drummer, haven't we? And we've got a, yeah, we've got a dentist we've had, and a doctor. We've had services and information, but we're, I'm saying things. What things yeah. have you had, right? Yeah. We've, we, right from the start, were like, just imagine, well, you said to me, Sam, think of the fanny and the free perfume. No, he never said that. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he did say, think of the free perfume. And I was yeah. like, yeah, he's got a point there. Mm. And I was like, are you sure, though? Because isn't that just one of those myths about podcasting? Well, I said and, it might and, take a few years. And you were like, you've got to stick with it. Trust me, if you work yeah, hard, if you work hard yeah. and you, you get your head down, right, then eventually, trust me, the perfume will start rolling but in. You've got to be patient. And, and I was like, I was getting to the stage, I was like, fucking hell, it'll be a six year anniversary next year. I mean, I haven't had a fucking, I literally, I haven't had a sniff of the stuff. Now yeah, suddenly, sniff of it. it's all fucking coming. And if but the bloke's that's, listening... That's why you saw so many podcasts come along, during, especially during lockdown and yeah. since. And they come along and they do 16 episodes and then you see them just disappear. They fuck they think off. Perfume's going to come straight away. And then it doesn't turn months. up doesn't, and they give up. It doesn't work like that. They give up. Yeah. So we finally, we finally fucking finally, we've got it. And um, uh, I've, got some, I've got one that smells of Hammersmith and you've got one that smells of Seaburn. Oh, brilliant. Uh, and... And I will post pictures of it um, when I get back to London tomorrow yeah. in order to also promote this this like independent yeah. perfumiers as well because they've been very kind and I'm not giving them a proper shout out here. But I will tweet about it and Instagram it and all that stuff. Mm. And most importantly, you will send the perfume. I will send the perfume to you, of course, yeah. yeah. Wonderful stuff. And then I will I, I will go on a tour of this perfume place because it's not far from me. It's right near my mum's. And, you know, that's an offer you don't get every day. Oh, of course. And it's, it's, think, it's, think of the content I'm going to get out of a tour of oh, a perfume. It's, it's like our one of our favourite shows made in Britain on ITV4, isn't it? Yeah. As a voiceover by Jimmy Nill and Ricky Tomlinson. Yeah, so I can't Great wait for stuff. that. Mm. Good, good times. Yeah. Um... There was a couple of mailbag things I was going to look at, but one of them's really long, but it's um, from uh, Joshua Fitzpatrick, and he's talking about uh, when we were encouraging young UK people to move abroad. Oh, Britain. yeah, I saw this email, yeah. no fucking good. And he says he's from <laughs> Manchester. He's 34. He's lived in Vietnam for eight years. He had a lot of shitty office jobs in Manchester and decided to try his hand at teaching English abroad. Um... It's a very long email, like I say, and he's basically stayed on uh, his uh, girlfriend over in Britain, dumped him when he decided to stay in Vietnam. Uh, He's then found someone who is uh, his lovely wife, uh, who has seen the world. You skip the bit where he brags about all the women he had before he met his lovely wife. 
<laughs> he said, the, oh, I said, the ladies in Vietnam, he says, are open-minded and incredibly beautiful. <laughs> and it helps that they seem to find foreigners like me exotic and interesting. Mm. Uh, yeah. You uh, cheeky bugger. But yeah, he's got one kid, another kid on the way. And he says, I miss the UK in certain regards. I wish it could get something vending a crisp here. But overall, mm. leaving was the best decision of my life. Um, but he's oh. worried about the pollution and global warming coming down the road. But there you go. So... One of our uh, internationally based listeners says, get out of Britain. Yeah. See, anyone else got any suggestions from where we should go based on where you are? I mean, we've got, we seem to have lots of people in Australia. I know we've had yeah. some in New Zealand get in touch with us before. Well, people got excited when we said we'd go to Japan and do a show in someone's living room yeah. recently. Yeah. It was almost offers of, of making We had a, an that's email that's from said. at least one Kanto in Jap- who lives in Japan. Got up here for our effort. So yeah, as that. We, they haven't been forthcoming with the dough yet. Yeah, they held back a bit when it came to that. Um, Never mind. Yeah. Um, that's that's about it. I reckon for this one. What about the football? Uh, just I, I missed all the football. I missed it all today. Well, my team lost, and it looks like your team lost as well. So. Oh, one guy at this book football. event comes up yesterday, and I'd been talking in a book event. Oh, you know, when I was young, all I was into was football and drinking, and now I try to be interested in other things too. And I told them at this book event that I was, you know, always on the lookout for new hobbies, and people yeah. were suggesting hobbies to me and stuff like that. And uh, Giza comes up and he goes with his girlfriend, he goes, I've lived my life in reverse of yours. And I said, What do you mean? He goes, Well, for most of my life, I had loads of different interesting creative hobbies and was interested in nature and stuff. <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah. And, he went, and then in lockdown, I started listening to Top Flight Time Machine. And now I'm really into football. And I was like, what? <laughs> What's the, How? the football in it? I said, you can't blame yeah. us for that. We don't talk about football. We went, no, but I started listening to it at the beginning when you were talking about football. And that made me oh. start watching football. And now I watch Match of the Day. And then his girlfriend oh. piped in and was like, "He doesn't have a team, but he likes watching the highlights. He just likes to see that. He likes to see the ball move around fast." <laughs> it was like that. Remind. It was a little bit of a like, you know, um, when what's his name in uh, in the Carry On films goes away uh, when he goes Carry On Abroad or Carry On Camping, and his mum always sees him off on the coach. <laughs> you know, Charles Hawtrey. Yeah, <laughs> and she always says, "Don't give him any spicy food. He doesn't like it." <laughs> It was a bit yeah. like that. He's going, yeah, no, I got quite into football. I'm pretty into football yeah. now. I wasn't for the first 30 years of my life. And she was like, he doesn't have a team, though. He just likes to watch the highlights. He can't watch a whole game. And you can see him sort of can't, thinking, can't I, watch a whole game. I could see him thinking, oh, shut up. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. <laughs> I, I can't he can't watch, watch a whole game. I, I've watched loads of whole games before. He can't. He gets nauseous. It's like travel sickness. <laughs> he has to go for a lie Thank down. You, <laughs> well, the whole games are boring, aren't they? We've said yeah, this they before. are. They really um, are. Yeah, prediction league, two points each. Me, you and the results bot, two points each. Okay. Um, Level peg so in results here. bot's on 27, I'm on 20, you're on 18. So there we are. Okay. Yeah, we've got all the good stuff coming up during the week. Uh, we've got a new tune machine starting on uh, Tuesday. And then it's going to be a bit more of Demis Roussos and Melchester, etc., <laughs> etc. Et and we'll be back on Friday. And, with and don't forget, Turbo update. subscribers, if you're thinking of upgrading from Platinum to Turbo, uh, Racy's Rocket special mini series going on for the Turbos at the moment. And it's going down like free ice cream. It is pure Roy. Let's it's just pure say Roy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for listening and goodbye. Goodbye.